Hello and welcome to Daily Current Affairs by Neo IAS. Today is 30th August 2019 and the topic we are going to discuss is Path Tapi Narmada River Interlinking Project, Northeast Rural Livelihood Project, Sites, Kampa, Map Aided Program. Map Aided Program we are continuing with the Tiger Reserves in India and the previous year question revision series. So, so coming to the first topic, Path Tapi Narmada River Interlinking Project. This is in news because the protests have started in the tribal dominated districts of Dang, Tapi and Valsar. So that is in the uh, Par Tapi Narmada river basin in Gujarat and Maharashtra. So this project is basically to transfer the surplus water of rivers in Maharashtra and South Gujarat uh, to the Miyagam branch of the Narmada canal. Okay, so it will save water in the Narmada dam. Uh, which will be taken to the Saurashtra and Kutch region. And the project is aimed at diverting the surplus water from the part of west flowing rivers like Par, uh, Nar, Ampika and Oranga basins in Maharashtra. Okay, so there is another river interlinking project connected to this that is Daman Ganga Pinjal river interlinking. So this is expected to fulfill Mumbai's water need till 2060. So the government of Maharashtra, uh, this particular project it proposed to divert the excess water from the reservoirs in the Daman Ganga Basin to Mumbai. So this will be done through the Pinjal Dam. It is built on the Pinjal River in uh, uh, Vaitarna Basin. Okay. So the next topic is uh, Northeast Rural Livelihood Project. So this is in news because the Union Minister of State for Development of uh, Northeastern Region, uh, they chaired a meeting to review whatever projects are happening in the Northeast Region. So, this particular project, it will empower the rural youth and they will also improve the livelihood of about uh, 3 lakh rural, uh, rural household in the northeastern region. So, this is a World Bank aided project. It's a multi-state livelihood project. It comes under the uh, Ministry of uh, Development of Northeastern Region. It has the states like Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Mizoram, Tripura, uh, Sikkim and uh, uh, Manipur. Okay, so the project they have implemented in 11 districts from 4 uh, states that is Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura and uh, Sikkim. So the project it aims to improve the rural livelihood especially that of women, unemployed youth and the most disadvantaged uh, people in these 4, th no four nor northeastern states. So the project it also will uh, work in partnership with the expert organization who are actually working on the sector right now. So the project it has also focused on the five uh, development strategy namely the social empowerment, economic empowerment, partnership development, project management, livelihood and value chain development. So see these are the five regions development strategies developed by the skill development project. So these include the community project executed by the community development groups who are working in the region and also there are uh, 176 rural infrastructure project under this particular uh, value chain development. Okay. And uh, the community development group, it is formed per village. It comprises of three members of every family. They will have a major role to develop the community. So they will be funded with around 10 lakhs rupees. So the, the activities under these are the construction of check dams or the reclamation of the wasteland, plantation, horticulture pro project, then the rural electrification, uh, provision of solar lightning. These are the programs which come under community development group. Uh, and across the project districts, livelihood activities by self-help group members are also being uh, involved. So they that will also increase the family income. Okay. So the next topic is sites. There's a convention on international trade in endangered species of uh, wild flora and fauna. So this is a news because uh, the 18th conference of party of uh, sites was recently held in Geneva, Switzerland. So the main highlights of uh, the sites uh, 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 summit was the star tortoise and the small cloud otters. They have been listed in appendix one of the sites. And uh, Toke Giko, it is included in uh, Appendix 2. And also the uh, the sites appendix, uh, when we talk about the sites appendix, there are three basic appendices according to the degree of uh, uh, the protection of the animal. So, Appendix 1, it will include the species which are threatened with extinction. 
So trade in the specimen of these particular species is permitted only in exceptional circumstances. In appendix 2 again it includes the species not necessarily threatened with extinction but they are you know um, they cannot be trade it, or the trade must be controlled in order to avoid the utilization, uh, utilization incompatible with their survival. And appendix 3, it contains species that are uh, species that are protected in at least one countries. Okay, that which has asked the sites uh, parties for assistance in controlling the, the trade. Okay, so the Indian star tortoise, it is the threatened species of tortoise which, which is found in the dry areas and scrubs of India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. So, these species are under schedule 4 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. It has given the IUCN status of vulnerable and in sites it is placed in appendix 1. Okay. So, uh, the next topic is Campa. So, this is a news because uh, <clears throat> in order to promote afforestation and achieve the green objectives of the country. So, the environment ministry they are uh, again handing over more money to the Campa funds in various states. So, the camp, uh, compensatory afforestation means it is afforestation done as a replacement for diversion of forest land for non-forest uh, use in, uh, in certain areas of the country. So, according to the CAMPA Act of 2016, for effective management of compensatory afforestation activities, the parliament, they, are, uh, they have enacted a fund that is a compensatory afforestation fund according to this Act and it, it provides for the establishment of uh, uh, these funds under nation uh, under national and state level. Okay, so uh, the major funds uh, that are uh, the Campa funds are used for artificial regeneration that is the plantations, then the natural regeneration, then catchment area treatment, soil and moisture conservation works, protection of forest and forest related infrastructure development. Okay, so it is also given for the wildlife protection. It is also provided for a constitution of an authority at national level and in state level for the administration of uh, these fund. Okay, so uh, this um, CAMPA in the in the recent draft national forest policy of 2018, the government uh, they aim to bring 33 percent of the geographical area under the forest or tree cover. So. Um, uh, if a company is diverting the forest land, then they have to do this compensatory afforestation uh, projects in the country in order to compensate it. So, uh, the for the afforestation purpose, the company should pay for the plan, uh, pay for planting new trees in alternative land that is provided to state. Okay, coming to the map aided program. So, we are dealing with the tiger reserves uh, in the country. So, today we are dealing with Anamale Tiger Reserve. It is uh, previously called as Indira Gandhi Wildlife Sanctuary and National Park and then it was called as Anamalai Wildlife Sanctuary. It is a protected area or a look, it is located in the Pollachi and Valpare taluks of Coimbatore and in Udumal Pete taluk in Tirupur. So, this is basically in Tamil Nadu and uh, it is uh, designated as Anamalai Tiger Reserve under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 in the year 2007. Okay. So, I have a picture of Anamalai Tiger Reserve. This is, an, this is not a very clear picture. You can Google it uh, for a better picture. Now, coming to previous year question revision series. Yesterday, I gave you the question about agricultural practices. Uh, the question was, uh, which is the global uh, climate change resilient agricultural type? So, the answer is C, 1, 2 and 3. All of the above. So, today's question, which of the following is the chief characteristics of mixed farming? Option A, cultivation of both cash crops and food crops. Option B, cultivation of two or more crops in the same field. Uh, option C, rearing of uh, animals and cultivation of crops together. And option D, none of the above. So, please give me the answer in the comment section below. Um, and uh, I will give you the answer tomorrow. So, I hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, that's all for today guys. Uh, good night. Thank you.